Welcome back to part two. In this part, we're going to focus on Omid's time as a streamer, his favourite moments, challenges, and also some advice for anyone looking to get into streaming in the future. We're also going to touch on stuff like new player retention. So join me as I head into the mind of Omid, and I hope you enjoyed the vid. And now, is there any one thing that you would change about RS3? Maybe... Let's say, let's bring it towards more new players. How would you get new players in? What would make it more accessible? So, I have like a kind of a different view than most people, I think. I think a lot of people look at things like money and smith smithing and thinking that's a good update for like new players. And I would actually disagree. Um, I think reworking a lot of content is actually a mistake. A better way of doing it, I think, is teaching. I mean, the way you bring in new players, let's, let's go to the start, right? Rather than retaining players, right? Uh, the way you bring in new players, in my opinion, is by making the existing player base happy and excited about the game. Mm. Like, yeah. No one's gonna be no no one that ha like someone that has never played RuneScape. They're not gonna start playing RuneScape because of mining and smithing. <laughs> there's there's absolutely no chance, right? That that's not hype or exciting. Yeah. Um, so I think the way you bring in new players, especially returning players, returning players would be even even easier to bring back with exciting and hype update and making the existing player base happy, right? So rather than focusing on new players and returning players, I think they should focus on existing players because I think that's how you bring in new players and returning players. Um, and I think the way to retain players rather than like completely reworking up uh, uh, things and, and graphically uh, reworking them, I think I think teaching players about teaching players the game and giving them a, like a direction would be much better. And those are just two things, right? In mm, terms, yeah. Of, but they're very, very big things. Like, I'm not saying it's easy. These, these two, like, to get these two things right, it's very fucking difficult because to teach the game comprehensively is very fucking hard, especially considering it's an MMORPG, which means masses of information. And number two, you, you know, being, being able to path the, the player in a, in, a, in a direction is also very hard because RuneScape isn't like other... Have you played, like, other MMOs? I've sort of dabbled into them, but not, like, seriously, really, at all. I don't know if you've done, like, quests, but usually it goes, like, you have, like, one area. It'll be, like, level 1 to 10. Yeah. And it'll be, yeah, like, yeah, quest, yeah. quest, quest, yeah. quest. But then the last quest of that area makes you go to another area, which is, like, level 10 to 20, you know? Yes. And it'll be quest, 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 but then you'll be, like, level 18, so you need to grind a bit to to get to the last yeah, quest, and it'll send you the next... But, but in RuneScape, it's like all over the place, right? There's no like designated area for certain like levels or mm. certain you know level of activity. So it's very hard to path a player through the game, I think. Um, and I think you know creating like a really good pathing system is would be very fucking difficult because I think a lot of the time I've watched like two two or three spons two sponsored sp streamers play RuneScape three. And most of the time, they're just like standing in the middle of nowhere, just not knowing where to go or what to do, you know. And, and they just end up logging out because of it. It's just like, okay, well, <laughs> like, they. So, that's what I would do. Is just you know, the pathing system and teaching them about the game, especially like combat. Um, and the other the other thing is uh, just making the existing player. Uh, existing player base happy and excited about the game, excited about the future of the game. And I think by doing that, you would do quality of life and end game. Mm. So, because yeah. as you as you do end game, obviously, you know, th uh, you know, high level content today gets squashed down to mid level content, etc. I don't think there should be any low level to mid level content ever again. I think there's enough there. The, yeah, yeah, I think it's enough there, hundred percent. It's very tricky though, because obviously, what twenty seven skills? Uh, yeah, <laughs> introducing so much to someone at one time. Obviously, free to play is what half that. 
just over. So, like, passing yeah. someone yeah. through 18 different skills is a very tricky thing to, like, do. Yeah, I mean, you're not... I, I think I think the player is going into the game knowing that it's going to be complex and vast and grindy, right? I don't think you should like. I think I think you should. Em- they should embrace their niche that they have like so much, so many skills and stuff, rather than like trying like, you know, making it easier and stuff. Like, I always use the example of Path of Exile, right? Path of Exile is just such a complex game, such an in-depth game. It has um, it's very non-new player friendly, but it's so successful because it just embraces em- embraces its its own niche and just like follows through with it rather than like backing up and trying to cater to uh, you know casual or new yeah. players. Um, so yeah, I-, I think you know RuneScape should just realize that it's it's a very grindy and and and. A bit filled more, with content yeah a bit more sort of self knowing what it is yeah and, and i think it should just like go through with it right rather than like pull back and try and like making it easier so maybe casual players can play the game maybe not wording it perfectly yeah. here but the, um, I, the, sure I think the idea I mean. gets across like i I'm yeah. sort of i get what it's you're basically, saying, basically yeah. just know your niche i think i think yes. i think they should embrace their niche all right. So if we move away from the in-game stuff and move on to streaming, why why did you start? What was it that made you think, ah, oh, let's do this stuff on Twitch? So I you I did YouTube from 2006 to 2000 and like 12ish or 11 consistently, but then I kind of fell off because uh YouTube became more about quantity rather than quality it came it became more about like pumping out as many videos as you can consistently uh so that's why i ended up moving to twitch and on twitch i think you can one of the things one of the beauties about twitch is you can actually see the player uh like how good the player is consistently rather than on youtube videos obviously you just see the highlights and the best moments you know it's kind of deceiving also you get to know the person on a very personal level or oh, some some streamers not necessarily rs3 streamers you know it it, it can be a bit hard like it, it's it, in, in some cases it feels like um like they're just trying to cater to what the what would be popular rather than being themselves obviously but but that's expected but i think you know you get to engage with a streamer on a personal level and you get to see how good they are consistently but i think yeah the main reason i moved to twitch was because of that and it, it was because boti streamed once on twitch and i was like oh that looks cool i'll try it because i remember when boti streamed on twitch like ev- once every month he'd be like the only runescape streamer <laughs> on there <laughs> like, literally it'd be like boti like maybe two people like one viewer and that'd be it and when I started, there'd be like I think there was like three like streamers, basically. Like old school wasn't a thing back then as well, yeah. so it's like three streamers, and we each had like twenty viewers, and that was it for like like a year and a half before everyone else realized it was actually a thing. Yeah, and, yeah. and then I think it was like me and Ken, mm. and gym source who were like the top streamers for like a while but i think gym source moved to old school but yeah i i i definitely prefer streaming to to youtube though and that's that's why i made the move so and what would you say your favorite thing about actually streaming is so obviously you said you prefer being able to see the consistency of people but like your actual personal uh, favorite my um me as a streamer or me watching as, me uh, watching as a streamer streamers. uh so definitely meeting new people like meeting new people and talking to them on a personal and real level i think i think being real is very important for me like i you know even if 
I have like a very unpopular opinion or, or publicly per, uh, perceived negative opinion, I'll make it because I think it introduces interesting conversations in a lot of cases. Most of the time you get very mind-numbing responses that can be frustrating and affect your mood. But in some cases you'll get like really, really good in, uh, conversations that uh, you know broaden your perspective, your own perspective. So I think I think that's just very that's one of the most valuable things of, of of being a streamer for me is just essentially meeting new people with new with different visions, different perspectives, you know, and just expanding it, your own knowledge and stuff through that, and and, and hopefully yeah. giving back to them. So yeah. yeah, that that's you know, and and, and very quickly those people become friends yeah. because you've you know engaged on a personal on a very very personal level. All right, and so, yeah. how do you reckon RuneScape could be like better suited to streaming? I suppose because obviously recently you've had old school have Twisted League. Do you reckon something like that would work for RS3? Mm, I'm just <laughs> going to be honest and say no. Um, I think Twisted, like something like Twisted League, needs a lot of like development for it to work. I think like you need it to be very, very like one time it works. Right. But obviously no development company is going to go through the process of making that foundation and using it only once. Right. Yeah. The, your, your plan would be to use it multiple times. And for you to do that, you'd need to make it very different. And for you to do that, you need to you know, make a lot of new stuff. Right. And I think to do that is very unrealistic because you'll be taking a lot of resources from the main game. So for that reason, I would say it wouldn't be a good idea. Um, so some games do that, but some games, their main... So how some games do leagues, right? Is that they have leagues, they have like huge new content added to the league, but then the, that content gets added to the main game. Right. Yeah. So the main form of game is the league, right? And the secondary game is the like the standard game that gets all the stuff yeah, yeah, that yeah. Gets, gets added to the league. So, but that's not how RuneScape is. RuneScape, the main game is not the league. So I think to take away con uh, development time putting into the league is is a bad idea unless you're going to commit to it and you know it's mm. going to be successful. And that's a huge risk, I think. So, I personally would say no. Like, one time it'll work, right? Just like Twisted League is working, right? But you go three leagues in, no. It's going to start, like, falling off really hard. Everyone because you, they're not going to be able to put... They're not just they're just not going to be able to put enough variety into the league, right? It'll just become repetitive and very exactly. similar to the previous one. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, but to answer your question, I think... Again, I think just making exciting and hype updates is the best way like you don't really necessarily cater to to streamers you just cater towards like exciting and hype updates because i think that usually results in good content mm. yeah so because everyone is that bit more engaged and you can see the excitement actually in the streams as well. exactly and the discovery and exploration mm. with the with the viewers and stuff like that's that's what's good and that's not necessarily that's not catering towards you know streamers at all uh, i i don't think a game should ever cater towards stream i mean things like lootscape and stuff being incorporated to streamers is fine but actual content no okay uh <laughs> depends. like okay in some regards maybe right like so you know seasonals yeah so you could you know how like there's top hundred for seasonals, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead of there being just top hundred for seasonals, there could be like thresholds for like bronze tier, silver tier, okay. gold tier, yeah. right? And you could have like a content creator being highlighted into the seasonal. So, for example, before the seasonal gets released, I'll do like a week. I'll have like week a week of attempts at like Telos, right? And my fastest time gets highlighted on the seasonals. And if you beat me, you get something. Yeah, so it's like so a you kind of get to compete against content creators. Okay, I don't know yeah, if you would. Quite a you cool would, idea. I don't know if you would call that like catering to streamers, but it'd be more like incorporating streamers into or content creators into 
um, content. So, yeah, that's a nice idea, actually. Don't steal it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and how, how would you say someone new starting up streaming? What advice would you give them for it? Um, I think it's really hard starting up streaming because people expect a lot out of it. Um, but I think if you can keep a positive mindset regardless of your views, I mean, even you shouldn't ever look at your views. Like I, like I'm someone that went from like 150 to 200 consistent views to like 50. Right. Mm. But I'm still very, but I guess I'm not full time, so it doesn't put as much pressure in on me, but I'm still very appreciative of those people that still watch me. Right. Like you shouldn't ever be demoralized by like, um, you know, a graph going downwards, right? Because there's still like 50 individual people deciding to watch you, you know? Um, so I think you should have like a very, um, just a very positive and like, just not po necessarily positive, but just like, just appreciate what you have. You know, if there's like five viewers, there's five people that are deciding to watch you over like the 10 other big streamers that are going on, let alone like other directories. Right. Yeah. So that's very important because that's uh, something I see a lot out of like news or in the past from new streamers and stuff. They, they, and one of the worst things you could do is, 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 is complain about it, right? Because you're essentially blaming other people rather than yourself. You should always focus on on how you can improve rather than being like, oh, no one wants to watch me. You know, no. You should be asking. You should be saying like, how should I be able? How should I improve to uh, for people to watch me? Not you shouldn't be shouldn't blame anything externally. Always focus on yourself. That's that's one thing I always tell people: is just focus on yourself. Like even if you're in a five v five game, right? Any kind of PvP game, and your four teammates are complete, like objectively bad and playing a lot worse than you, it doesn't matter. You still focus on yourself. How could I have played around that? How could I have, yeah. you know, analyzed that better and 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 strategized around them being bad and, and and doing better? That's as as I'm taking like very extreme situations, right? But you should always always focus on yourself. Uh, and generally speaking, I think you need to be consistent, have a set schedule, and be entertaining or be good at the game. Mm. That, that the or like when I say entertaining, that that's very very broad, right? That's like having like unique content, you know, being able to like talk very well and be very charismatic, um, have very interesting conversations. Be like having, I feel like having really good English is pretty damn important and being very witty with your words and, and like maybe like responses. I think that's very, very big and that it could like really shoot you up there and build a community around you. Um, yeah. It just makes it Sorry, feel I, a bit I, more personal and kind of yeah. close to yeah. home. I mean, some people, there's definitely different communities, right? There's some people who like positivity. There's some people who like the real stuff. Some people just like a clown, like just like, just, you know, pepegas, you know, like complete clowns, you know, but th there's, there's, there's an environment for any kind of entertainment, really. You just have to be really good at it. And yeah, the other part is like consistency and having a set schedule because it sounds like consistency is a huge thing like if you if you do like you know six to nine every day for a year i think that that can have a huge impact rather than just streaming whenever you want yeah having a set time where people know they can go on yeah you'll exactly. be online they can spend some time just chilling out with you and chatting and and, and you're building a community of the same people because they're always like free at that time as yeah. well you know, and, and that obviously build, builds on top of that as long as, you know, you, you keep it up. Doing a good yeah. job as a streamer. Yeah. All right. And so, would you say the biggest challenge of streaming for yourself? I mean, obviously, you, are, like you said, you're not doing it full time, but what yeah. would you say the the biggest challenge is? Um, self motivation. 
like motivating yourself to do something that you're not obligated to do mm. obviously if you're full time you'd be you'd have that pressure right but i don't so i'm just like sometimes i just can't be bothered and that that does hurt my my streams right and the other thing that a lot of people never talk about i think is um and this might sound a bit weird but molding your community uh, into an environment where you can be happy and comfortable and by that i mean if someone acts out of line or someone annoys you if someone you know projects a lot of like <coughs> excuse me unnecessary negativity into your community um then you need to like expunge that you need to like deal with it you can't just let it linger because it'll just like make you unhappy or make it'll, it'll put you in a bad mood every time you see it etc etc you got to take action you know and, just clear and sometimes out. that can be hard like i've i mean i'm not gonna say any names or say any groups but i've had like a huge parts of my community just like being expunged because we just i i just didn't like the way they were acting and yeah. that was how it is and it was like a group of like 10 people mm. who, who were like there from the start but i needed to make that decision because it, regardless of whether i was right or wrong right like let's say i was let, let's say I was the problem, right? I still, you still should make that decision to, to, to cut ties with what makes you feel bad, you know? Yeah, because if, uh, if you feel bad, then it comes across and everyone else is going to start to just head on that sort of downward nature. Yeah, it also of... projects onto your streams yeah. as well and you're just everything. It, it can project on everything. So I think, I think like, obviously your community and your chat and the behaviors is is generally built off yourself. That's an, mm. going back to it. Focus on yourself, right? Don't blame your community. That's that's on you. The way the, re, the the way your community is acting, the things that they're saying is is because of you, right? Not maybe not maybe not because um <clears throat> the way you act, but you're allowing it. You know, you yeah. you have the power to just straight up ban them, kick them from everything. You know, it's not like you don't. And if you allow it to just linger, other people are going to be like, oh, that's okay. Oh, that's how people... Like, you'll notice if you go from streams to streams, same people act very differently in different streams. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting yeah. to look at. <laughs> like, some people like act really nice and helpful in one stream. Then they come into my stream and they're like, your dog shit. <laughs> and they just, just start trolling me and just start requesting like Taylor Swift songs. I'm like, fuck <laughs> sake like <laughs> you know like but yeah i i think that's that's the hardest thing is is molding your community into an environment where you can be happy and comfortable like that's definitely the hardest um yeah lovely all right well with that i think i've wrapped everything up that i wanted to ask uh is there anything you wanted to add or any shout outs you want to make uh not really, just uh, if you want to catch my streams, twitch.tv forward slash Omid. Very simple, very easy. You know, come in and we'll have a great time and hopefully get to know each other better and have interesting conversations. <clears throat> but yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Oh, and I, I, I like to, one, one of my main um, priorities as a content creator is my Discord. So discord.gg forward slash omid if you want to join i try to focus and build on my discord community uh, through various methods such as like we do like hangouts we do game nights we do movie nights etc so yeah get on that all right well lovely thank you very much for coming on I hope thank you, you for having me uh, and i will i'll catch you in twitch at some point will do see you see later you.